Oh, hallelujah, I will lift up my hands and praise his holy name at all times, no matter what I'm going through. And Pastor Jim is right. God's going to set you up. He's going to set you up to see if what you just said is true. Oh, you can bank on it. I'm so glad this morning that I am saved. Not by works, lest any man should boast. But by the grace of God. Oh, hallelujah. And I would like everybody to turn your Bibles or your phones or your computers or whatever you got uh, to the book of Psalms, chapter 18, <laughs> verse 30. Oh, hallelujah. This has been a message in the making. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 30, he says, As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those who trust in Him. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock, save our God. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your holy word, Lord God. For we draw strength and comfort and encouragement and power and strength through it, Father. And we just love you and we thank you for it. We just thank you, Lord God, that you are our shield and our defense and our buckler, Lord God, a very present help in time of trouble, Father. And this morning, Lord God, I ask that every heart be prepared today, Lord God, as we have worshipped you, Lord God, and I pray that the Holy Spirit has cultivated the heart, ready to receive this word, Lord God, that it would settle down in their heart, Father God, and that it would bring forth fruit to the praise and glory of your Son, Jesus Christ. And I give you praise and glory. And Satan, we bind you by the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ, that you shall not achieve or accomplish any of your desired goals, plans, or purposes, or schemes, but in the name of Jesus, you are bound. And right now, we loose the Holy Spirit to have his way in each and every one of us, God, that you continue to do a work in us, Lord God, because we are your workmanship, Lord God, and we bless your name, Father God, and we love you for it. And the church says, Amen. Amen. The name of this message this morning is trusting God in the fire. Trusting God in the fire. And I know we say it many times, Pastor Jim said it this morning, and we say it often, that if you've decided to make the Brian Assembly your home church, you've decided to become a member, to get ready for a fight. And that statement absolutely is true. But I, I think what we need to say is if you've made the Berean Assembly uh, your home church and you've decided to become a member of this church, that you don't need to get ready for a fight. You need to get ready for the fight. There is a particular fight. And that's what we preach here. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Crucified for the sinner, crucified for the Christian. And if you have decided to make this church your home church, then you will be in the fight. And that is the good fight of faith. And that's what I'm talking about. It's not the church. It's not this beautiful building that you see. It's not the worship team, no matter how anointed they are. No matter how wonderful it is in the presence of God that fills our heart. That's not what the enemy cares about so much. That's not what it is, because you can get that all over the world. But what he's concerned about is what you have come into as far as being sold out, receiving the message of the cross. That's what he's concerned about. It's the doctrine of the church that he cares whether you receive or not. He could care less if you come in here and worship 
and fellowship and have a good time. And you go out a defeated Christian. He could care less whether you come in that way. What he cares about is if you have a functional working knowledge of the message of the cross. That's what he cares about. So if you have come in to the message of the cross and you believe it, then you can be assured that you're going to be in the fight. Because that's what it's all about. It's about the fight that God allows. <laughs> the word of the Lord is tried. If you say that you believe the message of the cross, if you say that you are sold out to it, that it is functional working in your life and that is what you believe, then you can be assured that God is going to allow some things to come into your life to try what you believe. To whether it is just a profession of faith because you're in with everybody else and you're associated with everybody else that has the message of the cross, that they believe it and you associate with it and you profess it, he's going to show whether it is genuine or just profession. So you can get ready for a fight. And the reason is, is because Satan knows and understands that what defeated him was the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It is not your mechanisms, your machinations, it's not your efforts, your flesh, it's not anything that can defeat him. And he knows that if you come into this message and you begin to believe it, then he is in trouble. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to stop you, distract you, discourage you, make you discontented. He wants to attack you in your body, in your mind, in your soul, and your spirit. He'll do everything that he is allowed to do. To come against you, to get you to stop, to get you to quit. That's what he's concerned about. But Colossians chapter 2 verse 13, he says that you being dead in your sins has he quickened together with him. <laughs> Having forgiven you all trespasses. Amen. Blotting out the handwriting of an ordinances that was against you, which was contrary to you. Taking it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And all principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. He triumphed over them in it, in that atoning work. That is why he does not want you to understand or know that he is defeated. And he is defeated because of the atoning work of Jesus Christ. And if you ever get that in your heart, get ready for the fight. <laughs> And he'll do everything he can to stop you. Your finances, your relationships, your business, your marriages, your brotherly love for one another. Mm. He'll get up in there because he wants to defeat you. He wants to strip away from you the faith that you stand in. Or that you profess that you stand in. See, because the message of the cross is your victory. Amen. That's why. That's where the power is. That's what, that's what God wants you to do. Have, have that devil. <laughs> that's what he wants you to do. And so when you come into this message and it begins to operate in your life, there's only way that it can be operating. And that is to face some things. Oh, you got a target on your back. But there's one thing as you as a child of God has to understand, among many, but there's one thing that you really have to understand as a child of God, and you always have to have it in the forefront of your mind and your memory. That no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, that God has allowed it. You have to know that. You have to know that he is, he, he knows the end from the beginning. The beginning to the end and all other times in between. 
that there's nothing that has gotten by the Lord. And you have to know that, that he knows exactly what he's doing. The devil can't just do whatever he wants to do in your life. He doesn't have that kind of authority. But God sets the boundaries of what he can and cannot do, what he's allowed to do in your life. Remember Lot. Turn with me if you the book of Job, chapter 1. Verse 6, he says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Where have you been? And then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man who fears God and eschews evil. And then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught? Have you not set a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth your hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Not mine, because I don't do that. I'll allow it, but I'm not a cursing God. I'm a blessing God. And I'm going to use you, you little devil, to get my way in his life. See, that's what you got to understand, that God is having his way in your life. And it's not the devil having his way in your life because God has an expected end for you. God has a purpose in your life. He has a reason for the thing that you're going through. Oh, hallelujah. But we so easily forget it. <laughs> mm. And the Lord said, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only upon himself put forth, put not forth your hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. He lost his property. I won't read it. He lost his property. He lost his sons, his daughters, his servants, his cattle, his sacrifices unto the Lord. They were taken from him because the devil was allowed to. And Job... Worship the Lord. My, my, my. I'm giving you something right now that is very important. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're doing, no matter what you see, no matter what you face, worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Stick it right back in the devil's face and say, no matter what you do to me, I'm going to worship my God. I'm going to worship my king. I'm going to worship my living redeemer. Oh, hallelujah. You stinking slew foot. <laughs> I'm going to worship the Lord no matter what I face. Job said, because naked came I out of my mother's womb. <laughs> and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Chapter 2. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, from where do you come? And Satan answers the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, have you considered my servant Job? <laughs> I want to give you a double whap. Consider my servant Job again. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, that there is none like him in the earth. A perfect man and upright man, one who fears God and hates evil. And still he holds fast his integrity. Boy, he still holds fast to his integrity. 
although you move me against him, destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, all that a man has will he give for his life. But put forth your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, he is in your hand. But save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot to his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with him. And he sat down among ashes and then said his wife unto him, do you still retain your integrity? Oh my Lord. Curse God and die. And he said unto her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. What, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not we receive evil? Oh, in all this did not Job sin with his lips. See, in all of this, Satan was only able to do what God allowed him to do. Even though Job didn't understand, and we don't understand why we go through what we go through, or the reasons why, we don't understand. But the ways of the Lord, they are right. The ways of the Lord, they are perfect. Everything the Lord does, everything that he allows, everything is right and it's perfect. And let me tell you something about the word perfect. It means entire integrity. Truth. It means without blemish, complete, full, perfect, sincerely in sincerity. Sound, without spot, undefiled, upright, uprightly, whole. It means to be complete, to accomplish, to come to an end, to come to the full. Oh my God. Whatever God does allow in your life is perfect. It'll come to an end. It'll be perfected. Oh, hallelujah. It will be accomplished the way that God wants it to be accomplished in your life. Oh, hallelujah. It's what he desires. And he will accomplish without fail. I remember Sister Dorothy Cox. The Lord brought this to my mind this morning. I just remembered her as I was praying. The Lord just brought her to my mind. And I went many times to go see her in the hospitals and the rehab centers. And every time I went there, she ended up praying for me. I went there to encourage and got encouraged. I went there to bless and I got blessed. Oh, hallelujah. I went there to pray for somebody and got prayed for. And I remember whenever we did her home going, that her words were, all the things that she's gone through in her life, she had a rough life, all the things that she went through, she said, why not me? Remember that? Why not me? Why not me? I know that God is doing something in me. Why not me? Oh, hallelujah. And it stuck with me. She gave me a little bookmarker. We always had a joke because she was from Oklahoma and I'm from Texas. So I say, how you doing, yo, yo Oklahoman? She goes, how you doing, yo, Texan? She gave me this bookmarker with a, a stork on there swallowing a frog. And the frog was halfway down the stork's mouth. And the frog had his little hand around the throat of the stork. <laughs> it's halfway down. And it said, don't give up, you old Texan. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That sister Dorothy, uh, she said, don't you give up. No matter what you face, don't you give up. The devil might be chewing you up. He might be trying to swallow you right now. But put your hand on his throat and tell him, you ain't going to have me, devil, because I ain't yours. What God wants to do in my life, he will accomplish it because his way is perfect. And he's going to use you, you old devil, to get his way in my life. I believe it. Because everything the Lord does is for your good. 
we don't understand it. We just look at, why am I going through this? It's for your good. I don't understand how this is for my good. You, that's right. You don't. It hasn't come to an end yet. It hasn't come to the full yet. Oh my Lord, I'll get to it. He has a purpose. He said that he works all things together for good to them that love him, to them that are called according to his purpose. He has a purpose in what you're going through. He has a purpose in what he's allowed in your life. And just because you don't understand why or how it's going to get done doesn't mean that he don't. It doesn't mean that he don't, because he does. <laughs> I know it's so simple, so profound, but yet we lose sight of it. Job said, though he slay me, yet shall I praise him. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, and I will keep my integrity. I will keep that integrity. I will maintain it before him. I will maintain my ways before him. Because what you believe is going to be tested. What you believe is going to be seen if it's genuine or not. And what you believe will be tested in the fire. The word of the Lord is tried. And it's tried in the fire. And that word tried means to purge away. It means to purge away, to refine. First Peter says it like this. Beloved, think it not strange. Oh God, why am I going through this? I don't understand. Oh, oh, why? Oh, beloved. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> That's not good. Bless your heart. <laughs> Think it not strange. Why? Answer coming. Concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. There's the answer. Why am I going through this? To try you. But love, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Yes. Oh my God. That is the answer. I've been searching all my life. Why am I going through this? What? It's to try you. It's been a long trial. It has an expected end. But it's to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. But rejoice. See, it's really easy when we're all up in here worshiping the Lord and the music's playing and we can worship the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And then walk right out of here and the enemy just, where's that, where's that rejoicing? I can't find it. Where'd it go? I was just doing so well. Oh, my, 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 my. It says, but rejoice in as much as you are partaker of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad with exceeding joy. See, the fiery trial that God has allowed to come your way, or if it's because you did something wrong, I need God. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Got awful quiet up in here this morning. Even sin. Yes, Christian sin. And sometimes we sin bigly. To, to quote a famous great president. Oh, hallelujah. Do we miss? Do you miss him now? <laughs> do you miss him now? Oh, hallelujah. But sometimes we sin bigly. Huh. But either way, whether you do 
or whether you didn't, God can use it. God can use it for good because this being tried in the fire is to purge away. <laughs> it's, to be, it's, it's to purify you. It's to take away the things in your heart, the things in your lives that are detrimental to your spiritual growth and health. They're detrimental and they're harmful to you as a child of God. And not just to you, but to those around you. So God takes away the sin that looks deep inside your heart and it takes a fiery trial to bring it to the surface. John 15, chapter, John 15, one and two, he says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me, that means you, if you are in him, if you are his, if you're called by his name, if you've been born again, you are his. Every branch in him that beareth not fruit, he takes away. If you ain't going through something, boy, better hope it's coming. You better hope it's coming. Ain't nobody excluded from this. Every branch in me. If you're not bearing fruit, He'll take it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it. If you're bearing fruit in your life, you can bank on the fact that God is going to prune you and purge you with a fiery trial so that you can bring forth more fruit. Oh. Oh, don't clip that off. Oh, don't, don't touch that. Oh, boy, it hurts. We don't like it. But this is to bring forth fruit of righteousness. That is partaking of Christ's sufferings, that his righteousness will be imparted to you to bring forth more fruit. And it's not fun when you go through these things, no matter what they might be. But you have to be discerning and to have some understanding of the things so that you may know what God is doing. So that you may know that God is doing a work in you. So that you may rejoice in the knowing. Like Pastor Jim preached. The knowing. You can have joy in the knowing. You can rejoice in the knowing. It's not rejoicing in the issue, not rejoicing in the problem, not rejoicing in the thing that you're going through. That's not what you rejoice in. You know that God is using what you're going through to bring more fruit in your life. And you can rejoice in the knowing. You can have joy in the knowing that I am his and he is mine. Oh, hallelujah. And what he's doing in me is for my good, for my benefit. But we don't see it that way. We just want it the way we want it. So there's joy in the knowing. And he says in Hebrews 12, he says, now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous. Oh God, but grievous. Nevertheless, that doesn't matter. Afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. You are being exercised in what you're going through. God is using the circumstances to exercise your faith in the fire, which is to try you. He's bringing about a work in you that only he knows how to do. Only, you know, the other last couple weeks ago when Pastor Jim was preaching, I'm sitting over there, I'm writing, and all of a sudden the Lord just showed, now, I've never played the game. I don't know nothing about it. But the Lord just showed me a Jenga game. You know, the Jenga with the little block and how you build it up one upon another. 
If you, okay, this is the way the Lord deals with me, okay? <laughs> this is what he does to me. That's what he showed me. And he showed me this tower of Jenga pieces, and they're all set up right. See, he's the architect. He's the builder. We are his workmanship in Christ Jesus. He knows what to deal with. He knows what peace to pull out of your life. And if you go sticking your hand in God's business, my brothers and my sisters, sticking your hands in your brothers and your sisters' business, doing God's business, doing his workmanship for him, trying to prune and purge your brothers and your sisters, because it's my father that's the husbandman, not my brothers and my sister that are the husbandmen, but my father is the husbandman. And if you go pulling pieces out of people's life, you're going to pull out the wrong piece at the wrong time, and it's all going to come crumbling down. But the master builder, the one that's got the plans, the architect of the house, he knows which piece to pull out and how to do it and when to do it. And when he does it, he does it right, and it don't fall. Simple, because I'm a simple man. But that's what he does. And it will yield what he does in your life. It will yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And it's hard at those times when we don't understand what's going on, when we're not seeing what's going on. It's hard for us to be joyful and to rejoice. And that is because you don't know what's going on. See, you can see what's happening. You can see all the turmoil in America today. You can see all the events that are transpiring and taking place all over this world. You can see what's happening, the circumstances and the events and the issues that we face, but you don't know what's going on. You can know what's happening, but don't know what's going on. Oh my, 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 my. You've got to know what God is doing. You got to have discernment of the thing, of what God is doing. This nation has let God's word so far. That's why we're going through what we're going through. That's why we got kids that don't know whether they're boys or girls. It's because we left the word of God. We don't teach our children the word of God anymore. We don't teach anybody the word of God anymore. We have departed from the word. We don't look to the word for help. It's like Brother Tom was saying, we don't read the word. We get into trouble, we can't pray because we don't have anything in us. We don't spend no time with the Lord. We don't spend no time in the word and we got nothing in there for our spiritual benefit. America is in bad shape because we don't run to the word anymore. We don't live by the word anymore. That's why we're going through what we're going through. There's been a departure from the word of God. And if you don't know what's going on, you need to check your relationship with Jesus Christ. See, there's something that you have to know. That's the answer. It's in the knowing. It's in the knowing. The purpose of it all. Philippians 1.6 Being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in me shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. See, you as a child of God, you never, ever, ever, ever gonna be without trouble in your life unto the day of Jesus Christ. We go from justification unto sanctification unto glorification. And whenever that day of glorification comes, oh, hallelujah, everything, all things are gone away. He's going to do a new thing in us, something in us, something that we've never experienced before. We have complete righteousness. Never one thought, never one, nothing of sin or unrighteousness. We can't even imagine. You can't imagine it because every day there's something in you. 
Oh, I'm in the right house, I know. He says you can be confident. James 1, 2 and 4 says, my brethren, you can count it all joy. You can count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, not temptation to sin, trials, tribulations, tests of faith, the trying of your faith. Because he says in verse 3, knowing this, See, he's telling us, and we have it in so many places in the Word of God. You've got to know something. Knowing this, knowing that the trying of your faith is working a patience, waiting, persistently waiting on the end for the fulfillment, for the perfection, the maturing of the saint in his character, in his godly character, this moral character. And he says, but let patience have her perfect work. There's that word perfect again. <laughs> Mature in the faith. Perfect and entire. Complete. Wanting or lacking nothing. Turn with me, you would, to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. He says, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Oh, God's going to put you in a place, like Pastor Jim said. And see, that place is a place where you can only trust in Him. To where you can only stand and see the salvation of the Lord. It's not by might, and it's not my power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. He says, and rejoice in hope. See, there is a rejoicing there in the knowing, in the hope of righteousness, in the hope of this righteousness that God is going to bring forth in my life. He says, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in the tribulation. Here's the joy. Knowing that the tribulation works patience. This tribulation is working patience in you to bring it to an expected end. And that, and then that experience you'll have at the end of it. It's to bring you about an experience with God, an experiential knowledge that knows that what you have just been through, God has brought you through. He didn't just bring you to it. He brought you to it and he brought you through it. And he will do it. Oh, hallelujah. So this experience, this patience works experience and this experience hope and if you've been living for the Lord for any length of time we have hope because God has brought you to something brought you through something and now you have experience to know that you can hope in what he's going to do in it and it's because the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Spirit which has been given to us but see, it's hard for us to have patience in the fiery trial. No one wants to be in the fire longer than never. Just the sight of fire. Ah! No, Lord. The Lord says, come back and You got some purging. You got some purifying to go through. Oh, because you're my child. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to put you on my threshing floor. <laughs> it's my threshing floor. It's not the enemy's threshing floor. It's my threshing floor. And I'm going to separate your flesh from the spirit. Everything that you trust in besides me. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. He says, let for, chapter 10, verse 12. Wherefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. 
there has no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Tested, tried in the fire, above what you're able. But with the trial, temptation, tribulation, the testing, he will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. He says, wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. That's what I said. He's going to take everything that you put your faith in, he's going to bring it to naught. He's going to show you that there is nothing that you can trust in besides me. And he says, flee that idolatry, what you're believing, what you're putting your faith in. That's idolatry. He says to flee from it and trust me. Through the trial. Through what you're going through. Turn with you would to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Am I born here? Okay. <laughs> All right. He says... And lest I should be exalted above measure, verse 7. Through the abundance of revelations. Boy, you had a revelation of the cross? Oh, hallelujah. You had a revelation of the cross? He says, and lest I should be exalted above measure. Through the abundance of the revelation that there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. What God does, He does to humble you. He does to humble you. He says, For this thing that I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me, and the Lord said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect. In weakness, oh hallelujah, that the power of Christ, it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in the infirmities, in the reproaches, in the necessity, in the persecutions, in the distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. That word perfect, it means to complete. For when I am weak, his strength is made perfect. It's complete. You know why God wants you in the fire and in the trial? Because that's when you're weak. That's where he wants you, in your weakest state, so there's no dependency upon him, that all you can do is say, bless the Lord, I will worship him and him alone. Oh, hallelujah. No matter what I'm going through, I know that God's doing something on the inside of me, and I love him because he loves me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He said his strength is made perfect in my weakness. Whenever I am, when I'm going through things I don't understand, when I don't know which direction to go, when there's the enemy behind me, a, a red sea before me, mountains and wilderness to the left and to the right, and I don't know which way to go, lift up the rod, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. That's what it's about. Oh, hallelujah. This word perfect means to accomplish, to consecrate, to finish and to fulfill, to make perfect, to consummate in character, in your weakness. But we as Christians, we sometimes think that uh, there shouldn't be any problems in our life. That we should. I mean, we're blessed. I mean, we're, we're king's kids, right? I mean, we're blessed of the Lord and highly favored, right? I got no problems in my life. Everything is roses. I got the wind at my back. Everything is great. We're not supposed to face anything that is hard. We're supposed to be blessed of the Lord. And if you're going through something... 
It's hard for people to understand, oh, he, may, he, may, he must have some sin in his life. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, he, he's got sin in his life. Yeah, yeah, he's doing something wrong. That's why God is punishing him. That's why God is doing something in his life that, you know, he, he, he's all messed up. He's got sin going on. And it might be very well the case. You might have some sin up in your life. You might have a sinful bondage that you're bound to. You might have committed some type of sin. And that's the reason all of these types of problems have come your way. It's brought some things into your life that normally wouldn't be there because of what you did or what you were still doing presently. But what about the times when you ain't doing nothing wrong? I know it's not 12. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I waited too long to preach this. So you... <laughs> but what about the times when you haven't done nothing wrong that you know of? When you're living for the Lord and you're doing everything you know to live free from the bondage and the power of sin and all hell breaks loose in your life and you don't know what to do. Remember this, Job was perfect in all his ways. <laughs> he was perfect. He was an upright man. He feared God. He eschewed evil. There was none like him in the earth, the Lord said. It's got nothing to do with what you're doing or what you're not doing. It rains on the just and the unjust alike, does it not? Hmm. Truth is, we just don't want problems. <laughs> we just don't want the issues that come with life. We want a trouble-free, problem-free life. It ain't gonna happen, my brothers and my sisters. <laughs> in fact, sometimes, right there in the fire is where God is. That's right where he's at. Can I say it this way? He's in you. Oh, he's in you. He dwells in you. His spirit lives in you. He doesn't separate himself from you, send you through a fiery trial that he hasn't gone through himself. Oh, hallelujah. He's in you. I hope that sinks down into you. He ain't going to let nothing happen to you that he ain't happen, it ain't happening to him in you. Let me put it to you this way. What you're going through, he's with you. He's in the fire. He's the fourth man in the fire with you. There's nothing that you're going through that he's not going through with you. He's in you. He dwells in you. Emmanuel, God with me. Oh, hallelujah. He's with me. That's when God's the closest to you. Oh, my God. My God is my strength and my refuge. He's a very present help. He's present in me. A present help in my time of trouble. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's the God that wars on my behalf. He's my warring God. His banner over me is love. Woo! Hallelujah. Jehovah Nisi, fight for me. Jehovah Nisi, fight for me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. At the beginning of last year, the Lord gave me a very prophetic word. I didn't know exactly how prophetic it would be about the things that we were going to face through 2020. That we were going to go through some things that we did not expect, things that would take us by surprise, things that would knock us off our feet, but that we needed not to be fearful. 
because he would be the fourth man in the fire with us. That's what he said. How many of you have gone through some things this past year? Some things that knocked you off your feet. Things that you didn't expect. Things that took you by surprise. Oh, my, my. But he didn't leave you. He didn't separate himself from you. He's been right there through it all in the fire with you. But sometimes we as Christians, we're scared. We're scared to say we're not doing so well. We want everybody to look at us and think that we all got it together. Let me tell you something, honey. Ain't none of us got it all together. None of us. Oh, hallelujah. I know I saw your angel wings just go, blue. Yeah. Ain't none of us got it all together. We're not doing so well some of the times. I love the first song that we came out and sang. That's whenever we got to lean on Jesus. That's when we lean on Jesus. It's easy on the mountaintop. To have faith. But it's down in the valley of trials and temptations that your faith is really put to the test. And we can see throughout the world today what the coronavirus has done. It has revealed some things that were hidden. It has unmasked some things that were masked. <laughs> we can see our churches have emptied. Don't really care about going back either. Well, up on the mountaintop, everything's good. But down in the valley, where are you? Where are you? The God on the mountaintop is still God in the valley. There's no difference between the mountaintop and the valley to God. <laughs> They're all the same. It hasn't changed him. But it's there are those places that when our faith is put to the test, we want to quit. We just want to give up. Don't you quit, you old Texan. Don't you quit. Oh, my grace is sufficient for you. It's okay to say you're not doing so well. I need some help, Lord. God, my faith is weak. I, I, I'm struggling right now. I need your help. I need your grace. I need your mercy. I need you to strengthen me. Help me. Bless me. Anoint me. Use me. Use me in a winter time. Let me bear fruit in the winter when it's cold, when I don't feel your presence and it's dark down here. Oh, hallelujah. I need your help, Lord. I trust in you, in the fire. I trust you, God. How do you, how do you not quit when you feel like quitting? We hear it all the time. If you don't quit, God won't quit. But I feel like quitting. I'm just about there. What do you do? <laughs> you turn to his word. My Lord. If I'd never gone through anything, I wouldn't know what his word, faith in his word could do. Hallelujah. If I never go anything, I wouldn't know that trust in his word could bring me through. God brings us to a place where we got to trust him and take him at his word. No matter what we're going through, it's his promises. His word is a lamp unto your feet. It's a light unto your path. In your word, Lord, will I trust. Oh my God. It's his word. When God gives you a word, you can stand upon it. I don't know where Brother Vic is. Whenever God gives you a word, 
He speaks to your heart when you're in the hospital bed and there ain't nothing you can do. And God speaks to your heart and says, I won't put on you more than you're able to bear. When you're unconscious and the Lord is speaking his word to your heart, the word of the Lord is tried. The word of the Lord will be found to be true with integrity because it's perfect in all of its ways. You can trust him because he is a buckler to all them who trust him. He is your shield. He is your protector. He is your defense. He gives you a word and your whole attitude will change. He can calm the storm within you when he says, peace, be still. And all of a sudden that raging storm on the inside of you settles down. And the enemy stops speaking and there's silence. Hush up. Uh, no one has ever put their faith in the Lord, put their trust in his word that has been disappointed. Amen. You might not have got it your way, but that's besides the point. <laughs> what shall the pot say to the one who created it? Why did you make me thus? Oh, my Lord. Even the Lord Jesus Christ depended upon the word. He was fully man, even though he was fully God. He trusted the word of God. It's all through the book of Psalms. He trusted the word of the Lord. He trusted that God would not leave his soul in hell. Oh, hallelujah. But he would raise him up. He trusted the word of the Lord. No matter what, he trusted the word of God. Hebrews 2 verses 18 says, For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, being tested, being tried. He is able to succor, to aid you who are also tempted, tested, tried. Boy, there's, there's a whole lot there. Tempted means a test, a trial, an attempt. Experience. To endeavor and to scrutinize. Hmm. See, God's searching the heart to see if there be any wicked way in us. He's scrutinizing us. It means to entice, discipline, or provocation. Adversity. Temptation and to try. See, Satan tested the Lord Jesus Christ in the wilderness. His temptation was to depart from the word. Because Adam received of the Lord a commandment not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In the day that you do, you shall surely die. Adam had a word from the Lord. And he failed. Jesus Christ came and put his trust in the word of the Lord. And Satan tempted him sorely. Like no other man had been tempted. And he did what Adam failed to do. He stayed true to the word of God. But his temptation was to depart from it. He was tempted to trust himself. And not trust God. Trust yourself. You can get out of this. All you got to do is command. You can get out of this. His temptation was to lean upon himself. Not like the song we just preached or sang. To lean on Jesus. Leaning on those everlasting arms. He was tempted to lean upon himself, to trust himself, but he didn't. See, I know the one. 
who was tempted. I know the one who was tried. I know the one who was on trial, scrutinized like no other man, enticed to depart from the word of God like no other man. He was thoroughly, through and through, scrutinized, not only by men, but by God the Father. Just like the Lamb of God would be looked at to see if there'd be any blemish. See, Jesus Christ was perfect, without blemish, without spot, pure, holy, undefiled. Oh, my Lord. He faced great adversity like no other man. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He was hated and despised of men, rejected of men, but he was accepted by God. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16 says that he was tempted in all points. See, we have a great high priest that can be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. And it says that he was tempted in all points. And I want you to understand this. This really got a hold of me this past week. Like as we are. That is very, very profound. What was his temptation? To depart from the word. He's tempted like as we are. To depart from the word. To put our faith in ourselves, To put our trust in ourselves. To get ourselves out of the mess. But God, like I said, it gets you in a place in the fire where you're weak. Amen. So his strength can be made perfect in your weakness because it's all about him and what he did on the cross and because of that because of what he did he's able to deliver to you the aid that you need being victorious over death being victorious over hell being victorious over the grave being victorious over the devil over the flesh over the world over sin over the sin nature he's victorious and because of that he can deliver to you the victory that you need Therefore, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace to obtain mercy. For grace, for help in time of need. Oh, my Lord. See, he didn't fail. And I got to say this. When we go through fires and trials of temptation, you got to understand something. That it ain't about you. Oh God, why am I going through this? What did I do? What have I done to deserve this? Well, what have you done to deserve any good? I'm just saying. What have you done to deserve any good? Shall we not of the Lord receive evil? And shall we not receive good? It's got nothing to do with what you did or didn't do. Put it to you that way. It's about the goodness of God given to undeserving men. It's about the grace of God given to you who don't deserve it. Who need it. I need the grace of God. I need your grace, Lord. It's not about you. Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. He went from the pit to prison, being falsely accused of something he did not do. But God had a purpose, even though he didn't see it at the time. You might not know what you're going through. You might be in the pit. You might be in the prison. Jesus Christ, he already knows. He has a plan. He has an expected end for you. He has a purpose, a future. And sometimes we're going to go through this life with some trials and tribulations and some tests that we don't understand. But it's not about the then, it's about later. It's not about you, but it's about others. 
Because Joseph sat there and went through that. Didn't know that God was going to make him the viceroy of all of, the, uh, of Egypt. He did not know that. But all of a sudden, when he saw his brothers, he remembered. And they bowed down to him. And he remembered the dream that he had. See, God has an expected end through the trial and tribulation that you face. God has got a plan for your life. <laughs> no matter what you face, no matter what you're going through, God has given you a promise. And his promises are true and they are yes and amen. You can count on it. You've got to understand one thing, and I really, God will bring it to the full. Because the word of the Lord is tried. He'll bring it to the full. And he will make you a better person on the end of it. He will make you a better minister through it all. He will make you a better pastor through it all. He will make you a better teacher through it all. He will make you a better husband, a better wife, a better person through it all. He's got a plan to create a moral character in you that is like unto him who has begotten you unto himself. To recreate the image of Jesus Christ in you. It's about Christ likeness that God is trying to bring about in your life through the fiery trial that you're facing to bring about a, a, a Christ likeness that was not there before. The fruit of righteousness in your life. It's about how you're going to minister to others. It's about how you're going to speak to them arrogantly or somebody that who has went through something and has been humbled and knows exactly how somebody else feels. Because you can have compassion. You can console those because God has given you consolation. You have been through some things. You know how people feel when they lose a loved one. You know how people feel when they're addicted to drugs, alcohol, whatever. Your addictions. I know how people feel about it. Divorce. Know how people feel about it. So I can have compassion. See, it's not about you. It's about other people. That's what Jesus Christ was about. What he went through, he did for you. He did for me. It was all about us to Jesus Christ. And so we as children of God, he says, be ye perfect. <laughs> As my Father in heaven is perfect. <laughs> God is doing something in you. Stand to your feet. Pastor Rodney finished at noon? Doubt it. It's 12.01. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we love you so much today. We thank you for the fiery trials, Lord God, and tribulations, Lord God. I know it's hard for us to glory sometimes in them, Lord God, or to take pleasure in them, Lord God. To rejoice and have joy, Lord God, in them, Lord God. But today, we have been filled with some knowledge. We have a knowing, Lord God, that no matter what I'm going through, Lord God, you're going to perfect it. You're going to perform into the day of Jesus Christ to bring forth fruit unto yourself to the praise and glory of your son Jesus Christ and his work on Calvary's cross, Father. And we thank you so much for it. We thank you that we are your children, Lord God, and we thank you that we have been counted worthy, Lord God, to go through the things that we go through, Lord God. I pray that our eyes would ever be before you. Our eyes would ever be on you, Lord God. I pray that our hearts would be lifted to you, Lord God. In humble adoration of you, Lord God. We love you and we thank you for all that you've done, for all that you're doing and for all that you're going to do, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for your blessings to be upon your people, Lord God. I pray that you protect them and keep them, Lord God, in all their ways, Lord God. That you, Lord God, would strengthen their hearts, strengthen their faith, Lord God, and bless them and bring them back, Lord God, in that appointed time. In Jesus' mighty name. And we give you praise and glory for it. And the church says, Amen. Amen.